good, good evening, Dr. Shanai. Good evening. Can you hear me? Dr. Shanai? Yes, good evening. Oh, good evening, good evening. Good evening, Sandosh. Good evening. Okay. First session, I learned. John Joshua of his start is a long and angle. Seven thirty. I live. Yes. Now it is fifty. I turned. Okay. Then, 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 I will start now. Let, the, let them join between. No we have formalities. Okay, sir. A warm good evening to each and every one of you. The study of pharmacy is an exceptional blend of pharmaceutical science, health science, and natural science. Pharmacy huh? is a versatile profession Sugar? where the pharmacists play a pivotal role in Sugar, providing Sugar. the best of patient care service and manufacture of drugs. It is also regarded as one of the most credible professions and a lucrative earning aid due to the methodical services provided by pharmacists to the society globally. India is renowned as the pharmacy of the world. The post-pandemic era has seen a stupendous growth in the field of pharmacy profession, both in terms of clinical and industrial strands, and is expected to emerge as one of the most economically and socially elevating profession. The study of pharmacy paved way for large area of employment opportunities in the industries, R&D, clinical pharmacy, government services, community services and healthcare management. I, Abhirami S, 8th semester B Farm student of Amrita School of Pharmacy, feel privileged to be the master of this ceremony. The event is organized by IPA Kerala State Branch, the best branch of Indian Pharmaceutical Association Industry Forum. With immense pleasure, I welcome you all to this webinar on career opportunities in the pharmaceutical industry. I welcome Dr. P. J. Shegar, sir, President IPA Kerala State Branch, Dr. John Joseph, sir, Secretary IPA Kerala State Branch, Dr. David Joseph, sir, Chair ICE Industry Forum, and Mr. P. K. Harikumar, sir, Convener Industry Forum to this event. I would like to request everyone to mute their mics and only unmute them when you are given time during the Q&A session. All your queries can also be typed in the chat box. To seek the blessings of God Almighty, let us begin with a prayer. Joseph, sir, Honorable Secretary of IPA Kerala State Branch and esteemed principal of Lissy College of Pharmacy, Ernakulam, is a former member of BOS for PG courses under Kerala University of Health Sciences at university and council levels. Sir has been a continuous source of inspiration and motivation to us, the young pharmacists. I take great pride in inviting sir for the welcome address. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Abhirami. <clears throat> A warm good evening to everyone. As we all know, India is considered as the pharmacy of the world. It's all because we are supplying a lot of medicines to the world. 
is all because we have a very strong pharma industry base. However, when you come to the state of Kerala, we cannot boast of many pharma industries and the availability of jobs for pharma graduates in the industry in Kerala also is limited. But when you look at the trend among the youngsters of Kerala, they are migrating to many parts of the country and also abroad. So if our pharmacy graduates are ready to go outside the state, the type of jobs available, especially in the industry is immense. And the knowledge about the career prospects in pharma industry can help our students to get better placements in the industry. Now, IPA Kerala State Branch has been striving to educate the students about the various opportunities available in all the aspects of pharmacy profession. We've been conducting continuing education programs, conducting job fairs, etc. And today, this webinar is conducted in such a, is such an interview where we want to expose our students to the pharma industry. And we have two experts from the pharma industry who have really excelled in their profession. And I'm sure that they'll be able to guide you, give you suggestions and uh, give you, highlight the opportunities available in the pharma industry. And I hope at the end of this program, our students will get an idea about the various opportunities available in the industry in Kerala and also outside the Kerala. <clears throat> so it's my duty to welcome all the dignitaries who are assembled here today. At the outset, let me extend a warm welcome to our eminent speakers, Dr. Premanand Shetty, Sukhanai, and Mr. Vinupal. Welcome, sir. Let me also welcome our dynamic president, Dr. P. J. Shega, chairman of the Industry Forum, Dr. David Joseph, convener, Mr. P. K. Hari Kumar, Mr. Sandosh Tia, who will be guiding us and uh, taking us to its next level. We have uh, many principals and faculty members who have guided the students, who have motivated the students to attend these programs. Welcome to you all. And above all, dear participants, this is for you. And if at least 10% or 20% of you are able to get a career in the industry, our endeavor will be satisfactory. So once again, I welcome each and every one of you, and hope you'll all have a wonderful time. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now, I request everyone to kindly switch on their cameras so that we can take a group photo of the webinar. I once again request everyone to kindly switch on their cameras so that we can take a group photo of the webinar. Okay, okay, Thank you, everyone. Now, the time has arrived. It's our fortune to have Dr. Prenath Shanoi, former Director of Regulatory Affairs and Quality Assurance Department of AstraZeneca Pharma India, as the speaker of the first session regarding Indian pharmaceutical industry, career opportunities in manufacturing and quality control. 
The session will be chaired by Dr. David Joseph, Director of Pharmaceuticals Private Limited and a versatile pharma professional having more than 30 years of experience in manufacturing and research field. Let me invite the moderator of the first session, Dr. Bobby John Sir. Sir has been actively involved in the pharmaceutical education and research since 1996. He has completed his MPharm in pharmaceutics from Dr. MGR Medical University, Chennai, and his PhD from JJT University, Rajasthan. Sir has also obtained MBA in Pharma Management and MSc in Applied Psychology. His research experience is in the novel drug delivery system to enhance bioavailability and biopharmaceutical parameters of drugs affecting clinical outcomes. He serves as an editorial member of reputed journals and associates with a lot of professional associations in India. It is my privilege to welcome you, sir, for moderating this session. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Abhinami, uh, for the nice words of introduction. Good evening to all. It's my pleasure to introduce the chair of today's first session. That is uh, Dr. David Joseph who is a successful entrepreneur in pharma industry field in Kerala. As uh, Dr. John Joseph sir rightly told, when many graduates migrated from Kerala to other parts of the globe, uh, Dr. David Joseph sir was the one who was uh, settled in Kerala and he's, I'm very proud to say that he's a successful entrepreneur uh, in the field of pharmacy from our state. Let me uh, introduce Dr. David Joseph sir. Dr. David Josephs is a well-established pharmaceutical consultant having more than 30 years of manufacturing and research experience from various pharmaceutical firms. He's a BPharm graduate from Government College of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Medical College, Thiruvanathavaram, and later he earned a Master of Business Administration and a doctoral degree in Management Studies. Presently, he is the Director of Variety Pharmaceuticals Private Limited and Saptavarna Builders and Wellness Diet Private Limited. He is an active member of various professional organizations and now serving as the Joint Secretary of Indian Pharmaceutical Association, Kerala State Branch. With these few words, uh, let me uh, welcome Dr. David Joseph, sir, for chairing the first session. Thank you, sir. Over to you, sir. Sir, uh, unmute 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 Presently working as a consultant to help small and mid-sized companies to improve their quality management systems, auditor to check the compliance to GMP and GLP and data integrity. He is an accomplished trainer for pharmaceutical industry also. Dr. Shenai retired as the director of uh, regulatory of AstraZeneca Pharma India and having 30 years of domestic and multinational companies experience. He has earned his form in pharmaceutics from Government College of Pharmacy, Bangalore, and PGDM from Bombay University, and PhD from Mysore University. He has been associated with institutions and universities as visiting professor, adjunct faculty, and supervisor for master and doctoral degrees. He is serving as president of IPA Karnataka State Branch and awarded IPA fellowship for his contribution to the pharmacy profession. He received the Outstanding Pharmaceutical Analyst Award from IDMA. His expertise is in formulation and analytical method development, quality control, regulatory, and pharmacovigilance. Over 30 research papers and 150 technical 
articles and three books on his credit so let me welcome sir for the first uh, session thank you good evening everyone at the outset i would like to thank dr jayshekha president of ipa kerala state branch for inviting me to this webinar i would like to congratulate professor jayshekha for doing excellent activities in the state of kerala which is benefiting the students thank you dr david joseph for nice introduction and i would also like to thank all the you know office bearers of ipa kerala state branch uh, i'll share the file now not to Professor, are you able to share? No, no. No, not at, not at. I'll just tell you. I'm just not able yes, to do that. I don't know what's the problem. Open share. That's one second, yeah. Have you allowed me to share the thing, or it is allowed, no? Okay. Nobody can share anything. Oh, okay. Mm. Okay, doesn't matter what I'll do. You know, I will just start the thing. Uh, just... Sir, actually, what is the problem you are facing, sir? Uh -huh. No, I'm I'm not able to see my desktop when I'm uh, cl clicking that uh, share okay. file. You know, my okay. desktop should come. No, so. That... Sir, oh. actually, in that in that third icon, you know, that with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, share. Up. Icon. You just click yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, there will be another some options will come, sir. One is yeah. screen, and the other one, uh, I think it is the desktop. I think. Just check in that way, sir. Desktop, I am not seeing here. Getting. Add back home. Share content is there. <laughs> you can click on share content, sir. Huh? After opening your uh, uh, PowerPoint, you can click on share content. Okay. No, actually, desktop is not seen. I opened my this no, one. Okay, one minute. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sir. Can you see now? No. No, not at. No, sir. Okay, sir, it's coming. No. Huh? Yes. You can see now. Yeah, yeah it's come. Okay, okay, fine. Thanks. You can make it a slideshow. Yeah, yeah. Can you see it now? Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. So, in the next thirty minutes, what I'll do is, uh, just to understand what opportunities opportunities are there for you pharmacists, you know. 
uh, we should understand the industry first okay, okay. so i will i will uh, cover briefly the global pharmaceutical industry uh, dr drug discovery and development how a new drug is discovered you know briefly and then move on to indian pharmaceutical industry how it is faring you know in, uh, at present and then i will come to the career planning uh, for graduates and post graduates so indian pharma i mean in general the pharmaceutical industry can be broadly categorized into two major categories okay one is research based pharmaceutical companies and the other one is generic product manufacturing companies okay so almost all the companies that are operating in india they fall under the category of generic product manufacturing companies although some of them have of course initiated research you know discovery research and working on inventing new molecules but almost 99.99% of the companies are uh, generic product manufacturers research based companies means they develop new chemical entities or new biologicals and market only their own product they don't market products of other companies okay now under generic companies you have different categories like you know there are companies which manufacture only formulations there are companies which pro, you know manufacture only herbal products which could be classical ayurvedic products or you know uh, other herbal products and then of course we also have some companies which manufacture nutraceuticals and there are companies which manufacture only bulk drugs and some companies manufacture both formulations as well as bulk drugs okay so these are the different types of companies you will come across in the indian context in case of research based companies they make both formulations as well as bulk drug but they don't sell their bulk drug to others you know they, it is for their own consumption whatever formulations they manufacture so for that they make their own bulk drugs and use it for manufacture of formulations if you look at the global market it is over 1.48 trillion a trillion in 2022 Okay, that's last year, and it is growing at about four percent, single-digit growth. You know, it's not very fast-growing. Uh, you know, uh, globally, so only in the emerging markets, the uh, you know growth rate is very high. U.S. market is the biggest market in the world. Okay, almost forty-five percent or forty percent of the market share is held by U.S. Uh, that is the reason why most of the companies. who want to export to you know other parts of the world they target us because that is the biggest market as well as they also get the good price for their products because drugs are expensive in us compared to even compared to europe or japan you will find that drugs are expensive in the us so companies get better pricing so every, uh, most of the companies therefore target us for launching their product China is the second largest market, 160 billion US dollars. Okay, and US is around 500 billion US dollars. And third, uh, you know, uh, of course, uh, Europe is a conglomerate or it's a group of uh, over 28 uh, countries, and that contributes to about 200 billion US dollars. Emerging market together, it's about 200 billion US dollars. Okay. now then uh, in the recent times the trend is developing biologicals okay besides chemical entities we also have biologicals and the biological market is about 300 billion us dollars okay this is the overall global scenario of pharmaceuticals which are the top 10 companies in uh, in the globe pfizer is number 1 okay and other names you can see in the slide you know you may be familiar with uh, johnson and johnson or Uh, maybe gsk astrazeneca you know they are in the top 10 okay coming to research and uh, you know discovery of new drugs which are the areas where research is going on currently uh, central nervous system related drugs metabolic cardiovascular anti infectives respiratory related genitourinary musculoskeletal and oncology of course oncology is one of the 
areas where a lot of work is going on because there is still an unmet medical need in the area of oncology. At any given time, you know, the R&D pipeline is very strong for the global companies. There are over 200 molecules under various stages of development, phase one, phase two, and phase three, and so on and so forth. You should remember one thing, pharma research is a very high risk venture. 90% of the medicines entering clinical trials often fail to demonstrate the necessary safety and efficacy and never reach the patients. You know, unlike other industries, like say, for example, automobile industry, if you take, for example, if they develop a particular model of a car, 100% they're going to launch that product, okay? But not so in case of pharma. They start with so many products, but even if they're able to get one product every five years, they know they should be very lucky. You know, the next slide will show you why it is so tough, okay? So there are, you know, companies start with, you know, the research with hundreds of discovery approaches and they may screen thousands and millions, you know, you know, a lack of, you know, seven to eight lakhs of compounds. They may get only about thousand screening hits and 30 candidates. And out of that 30 candidates, if one medicine comes out, the company issue will be, you know, very, very happy actually. Okay. So how much time does it take to invent a new molecule? It is anywhere between 10 to 15 years. Okay. And these are the different steps in the discovery of a new molecule. Discovery, which happens in the laboratory. Then we have exploratory development, that is phase one, phase two, phase three studies, which happens in a, a clinical setup in the hospitals. And then, of course, you go to the regulatory authorities for taking the permission, and then you launch. So all these steps, it takes anywhere between 10 to 15 years, and sometimes it may take even 12 to 24 years. You know, in some cases, it takes much, much longer. So in this slide, I have shown, you know, the attrition rate means failure rate. Preclinical phase one, almost 90% of the molecules fail. Even at phase three, you know, where, wherein the company would have spent almost 75% of their, uh, you know, uh, funding, 40% failure, okay? This is one of the reasons why new molecules that are developed and marketed by multinational companies are expensive because they have to spend so much of money to get a product to the market. Now, this slide I have shown, you know, how much it costs to develop a new molecule. It used to be about 125 to 130, 140 million US dollars in 1975, okay? Today, it is over 2 billion US dollars. In fact, for biologicals, it may cost even 2.5 to 3 billion US dollars to develop a new molecule. Now, let us move on from the global scenario to the Indian scenario. What are the objective of the Indian pharmaceutical industry? To contribute to making high quality, affordable healthcare available to Indian population. Okay. You should remember that price of, price of pharmaceuticals is lowest in India compared to anywhere in the world. Okay. It's already, it is lowest priced in India. The second objective is sustain leadership position in the export of generics. We are already leaders in generic, but we have to sustain that leadership position by remaining compliant and ensuring steady supply of products. And finally, we have to make headway in innovation and discovery where we are not, uh, you know, not doing all that well uh, at the moment. See, pharma industry's value proportion is very strong. You know, you should be very happy to be joining an industry which is helping in mortality improvement that is saving lives morbidity reduction that is coming you know companies coming out with innovative treatments which results in shortening of the duration of the disease it is also improving the quality of life of the patients and all this are having positive economic impact on the economy how so by producing useful medicines there is a reduction in the overall healthcare cost and there is improvement in the workers' productivity. And that, therefore, it will have an impact on the uh, economic, uh, you know, a positive economic impact. Pharma industry, you know, there are over 400 active pharmaceutical ingredient manufacturers, over 9,000 formulation manufacturers, and we are almost 95%, uh, you know, self-sufficient. Only about 5% of the drugs may be imported from other countries. Okay, 
and we rank fourth globally in volume terms and 13th in value terms and we are among the top five global producers of bulk drugs okay we are, we are doing so very well in both formulations as well as the bulk drugs i put the same thing in a you know chart form uh, only to show you you know that you know the different uh, operations we have besides formulations and bulk drugs there are also companies manufacturing biosimilars what is a biosimilar for a chemical compound when a product goes out of patent the copy of that when it is manufactured they are called generics in case of biological drugs when a copy of a biologic is manufactured it is called as a biosimilar okay why biologics are not called generics because you cannot produce a identical biological compound okay it will be similar to the biologic but not identical therefore they are called as biosimilar and not generic products okay pharma industry you know the our cost of production is much lower compared to most of the you know western countries that is one of the reason we are able to manufacture and export it to the uh, you, uh, export it to countries like europe and uh, us japan and other countries you know uh, rich and costly uh, economies mm -hmm. you should remember that india has the second largest number of us fda approved manufacturing plants over 2500 fda approved drug products and over 500 usd approved company sites which is highest number outside of us indian market size over 1.8 lakh crores okay it has grown so huge in the last you know 10 to 15 years by 2030 it's going to be 90 billion if you grow at 78% and 130 billion if you grow at 11 to 12 percent. Okay, that that is the uh, future of the pharma industry. Research spend is also increasing slowly. Uh, uh, you know, it may grow from 5.3 percent to 8.5 percent of the revenue in the coming, uh, uh, you know, five to eight years. So India is having a thriving export business. In 2021, it was 25 billion US dollars. Okay, you should remember India. you know supplies over 50% of the global demand for various vaccines 40% of the generic demand in the us 25% of all medicines in uk and india accounts for 20% of the global export in generics so we are doing extremely well currently and we need to maintain this leadership position in the coming years which are the different uh, you know part of the world where you supply latin america 16% north america 31% ASEAN 15% and Africa 19%. So these are the top companies in India. Okay, Sun Pharma is the top number one company in India with highest uh, market share, and of course other companies you know like Cipla, Zydus, Lupin, Mankind, DRL, Cadilla. These are all coming in the top ten. And India domestic companies have 80% market share, whereas the MNCs which are operating in India like Abbott, GSK, Sanofi, Pfizer, AstraZeneca, BMS. all these companies they have about 20% market share okay this is just some statistic about domestic and uh, you know uh, multinational companies operating in india the latest figure about uh, uh, indian uh, you know uh, sales how it is doing 50000 crore was the sale from january to march 2023 which is 15% higher year on year basis okay and this 50000 crore in one quarter chronic therapy contributed to 38% and acute therapy contributed to 62% okay and domestic companies are growing at a rate of 16% and mncs are growing at a rate of 10% you know uh, in this particular quarter okay now let us move on you know having understood how you know uh, well the pharma industry is doing globally as well as in the indian context let us move on to uh, you know the in, uh, topic uh, you know which is very you know useful useful for you uh, for making your career okay career planning there are plenty of opportunities for pharmacists okay as i was saying earlier we have formulations bulk drugs cosmetics now even medical devices you know government of india is spending lot of uh, you know uh, investing lot for developing medical devices and pharmacists can make career even in medical devices industry okay now uh, 
you know, pharmacy graduates, of course, you have undergraduates, PGs, PharmDs, you know, all these you know, degree holders have plenty of opportunities, but you need to make use of the opportunities which is in front of you. For that, you need to plan proper, properly, okay? Not just take up any job that comes, uh, you know, uh, to you, you know, first job that comes to you. Uh, I suggest actually, you know, uh, this kind of a session should be conducted for students who are in third year or definitely in the you know early fourth year because they need to plan so early you know not after you graduate you need to plan this when you are in third year career planning is is a systematic process okay it's about identifying what you need to do both higher education as well as a professional path for yourself there's intense competition today you know there are hundreds and thousands of colleges across the country, you know, and thousands and thousands of students are coming out, graduates are coming out. So there's an intense competition. So you need to prepare if you really want to do well. Okay. Why you should do career planning? Because this planning tool makes you very competitive. And without a proper plan, you'll, you'll, you'll be taking reactive mode and therefore you may not succeed in your career. Okay. You remember, survival of the fittest holds good here also. You know, external forces, not you, will determine your success if you don't plan properly. Therefore, you must take charge of your career and plan it properly. What are the benefits? It makes you more confident, okay, if you do a proper planning. And you'll be able to identify choices which is good for you job the job which is good for you okay and you will achieve higher grades this is applicable if you are going for higher studies pg or you know in uh, different specializations of pharmacy or you may choose to do a mba you know if you plan properly you will be able to get better grades there and you will get placed with higher income in your first job if you properly plan okay how, how should you develop your personal career strategy there are five steps okay First step is discovering yourself. That means you should know about yourself. Most of the times you don't know in what areas you are good, what are the areas which you need to improve. Therefore, in career planning, this is the first step wherein you should sit down and write down what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses, what are the areas you need to improve, you know, whose help you should take to improve the things, you know, and so on and so forth. Actually, Career planning is a you know half a day workshop I normally conduct for pharmacy graduates. Okay, so it cannot be described in uh, you know 30 minutes presentation. Okay, so second step is exploring different options. Next is making a decision as to which of those options is good for you, and then you take actions and finally evaluate your decisions. You know this is the cycle you have to follow in planning your uh, preparing your strategy for uh, career development. So let us look at uh, yeah this I just wanted to share with you. You know, uh, there is an organization based in Bombay, which is very helpful for students for planning their career. Okay. Uh, actually, it is started by two pharmacists only after working in the industry for more 20 years. So if any of the students are interested, you should just Google for platform. Okay. The name of the company is platform. What are their activities? They help you to identify your strengths and weaknesses uh, in which career option you should choose. And then they will tie, uh, you know, tie you up with a mentor who will then uh, help you, you know, develop yourself. Okay. So those in who are interested, you should just make a note. Platform, P L A T P H A R M. If you Google it, you will get more details about that. So let us look at the career opportunities for pharmacists. You know, plenty of opportunities. You know, there are so many options, but to which area you should choose. You can do that only if you do a proper planning and identify what are your strengths, what is the environment in which you want to work, you know, and uh, uh, so on and so forth. So we have manufacturing, R&D, education, hospital pharmacy, enforcement, drug testing laboratory, wholesale, you know, that is starting your own wholesale business or community pharmacies or corporate jobs. Okay, these are broad opportunities what you have if you look at manufacturing you have you can get into formulation development or production of formulations biologics or apis 
you can get into quality control, quality assurance, warehouse, regulatory planning. Okay, these are all again, you know, different opportunities in a manufacturing site. Okay. Now, what are the expectations from freshers if he or she wants to go into production? You should have a hard skill like your degree in pharmacy. You should have dosage form, various dosage forms you should be familiar with and the different steps involved in the manufacturing. And then language. Suppose, see, you are working in Kerala. I mean, I mean uh, you are uh, studying in Kerala. Your mother tongue is Kerala. I mean, Malayalam. So, uh, and you take up jobs in other states. If you go to production in different uh, states, what will happen is, you know, the local language becomes very important because in production, you're going to interact with or you're going to work with operators uh, who are from the local area, right? So they will not know English, most of them, you know. So knowing local language becomes very important, okay? Then what are the soft skills? You should be a team player. You should have good communication skill. You should have problem solving skill and you should have good interpersonal skills. Okay, these are some of the hard skill and soft skill what you should have if you, you know, for a fresher who wants to enter production. Now, in quality, we have different options. Quality control, that is working in a laboratory, then you can be, uh, if it's quality assurance, you can become an auditor, you can become a QMS expert, you can work in validations, compliance, Complaints handling, documentation, in process control. See, in large companies, these are all different roles you will get in a quality assurance. Okay. I think quality assurance and regulatory will be covered by another speaker after me. So I'm not getting to that. Let us move on to uh, only specifically only quality control. Okay. In quality control, you have options of working in, uh, you know, uh, initially, you know, okay, sampling of raw materials, sampling of packaging materials, chemical testing. This is another option what you have instrumental analysis, microbiology lab, and packaging metal testing lab. Okay, these are the different options you have within the quality control. And what are the expectations from freshers? You should have a degree in pharmacy or any other life sciences degree. And then you should be familiar with pharmacopias, various testing methods, familiarity with the instruments. These are all the hard skills what you should have uh, when you go for an interview, you know. Then of course, soft skills. Communication, interpersonal skill, you should be a quick learner and ability to, to meet deadlines. You know, these are some of the uh, you know, soft and hard skills what you should have. Now, R&D, you have plenty of opportunities. Again, you know, you have analytical, you have formulation development, packaging development, organic synthesis, herbal product development, and biologics. Now, let us move on to another area that is clinical research. Within clinical research, also there are different options like you can become analytical, quality assurance, clinical research associate, clinical supplies associate, and regulatory associate. Then corporate options. Now, you know, nowadays, you know, you have many options. In fact, most of the youngsters today, you know, uh, they would not like to work in manufacturing sector. They prefer to work in a corporate setup, okay? Uh, working in offices, just, you know, in front of a computer, you know. So you have plenty of uh, opportunities in this area also. What are those opportunities? You have IT and ERP. That is, if you have domain knowledge, you can make a career in IT. Critical coding. You can work in supply chain, procurement, planning, pharmacovigilance, medical services, and regulatory affairs. Okay. Of course, sales and marketing also will be covered by uh, uh, next speaker. So I will not touch that. Okay. Uh, from this, I will just choose only one or two and then. Uh, I know, uh, brief you, that is one is pharmacovigilance and the other one is clinical trials, okay? Now, clinical trial is, uh, uh, you know, very, very, uh, you know, interesting uh, area. A uh, PharmD, those who are doing PharmD and all mostly go there or even B-Pharms also, of course, uh, B-Pharm, M-Pharms also can take up a job. Uh, if you do well, the growth is very fast in clinical trials. One can grow because I've seen, uh, you know, see cases where, Within five years, you know, people have become managers and within 10 years, they become head of the departments, okay? So, such a great opportunity is available in the area of clinical trials or clinical research, okay? What is the role in clinical trials, uh, clinical research role? Uh, writing procedures, uh, briefing the trial investigators, 
setting up and disbanding triacide centers, providing clinicians with instructions, okay, and collecting and authenticating uh, data collection forms, monitoring progress throughout the duration of the trial, and writing reports. Some of, these are some of the uh, job responsibilities of clinical trial personnel. What are the skill sets required? You should have good interpersonal skill, oral and written communication, ability to work well in team, ability to establish strong client relationship, and ability to meet deadlines. Okay, these are some of the skills you need to have. Pharmacovigilance is another area where you know many companies are setting up back office in India. Many multinationals have started back office. Even large companies like uh, Accenture, TCS, and many IT companies also uh, have set up uh, you know uh, back offices for helping multinational companies with uh, data processing. Okay, one of them is pharmacovigilance. Okay, so this uh, provides you a great opportunity for you know uh, pharmacy graduates and post graduates. What do you do there? It is pharmacovigilance case processing, responsible for adverse event and product complaint report handling, and uh, awareness of global pharmacovigilance regulation is important for you, and ensuring regulatory compliance for expedited submission of case reports and internal and external business partners. You know, this is what is, you know, you have to ensure. Okay. Now, what are the different roles in PV and clinical domain? You can become a patient safety associate, a data analyst, pharmacovigilance associate, medical coder, medical writer, scientific content writer, regulatory associate, forecasting associate, clinical data coordinator, clinical research associate, so on, so on and so forth. There are different types of roles available in PV as well as clinical trials in different organizations. These are the companies. This is an important slide. You know, those who are interested in getting into clinical trials and pharmacovigilance, you should make, you know, take a photograph of this slide. You know, these are the companies in different locations, Bangalore, Mumbai, Pune, Delhi, Hyderabad, you know, depending on where you want to work. These are the companies which are offering you, you know, openings in clinical trial as well as pharmacovigilance. Okay. And there are names of the companies also given. More details about the companies you can, you know, get in the their respective websites. Now, what are the expectations from freshers for pharmacovigilance and clinical trials? A degree, of course, you need. Then, communication skill, analytical, logical, and reasoning skills. You should have Microsoft Word and Excel, uh, you know, knowledge, expertise. You should be a fast learner, proactive, positive, and team player. So, I'll come to the end of my, you know, thing. Uh, last uh, couple of slides. Uh, in the introduction, uh, uh, you know, uh, I, 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 I think uh, somebody mentioned, uh, one of the office bearers mentioned that there are no companies in Kerala and therefore people are going out, right? Other states. So what I'm suggesting you people is, why don't you be uh, become an entrepreneur? Okay, so in the next couple of slides, I am you, you, you should start your own company and create jobs in Kerala. So what are the different types of businesses you can get into? Pharmaceutical, manufacturing, or you can set up a lab. Within manufacturing, you have so many options. You can become a contract manufacturer, or and you don't only market the product. You don't have to have your own manufacturing company. You can only market it. If you're good in selling, do only selling. Okay, You can get your product manufactured at a contract manufacturer. In the lab, you can set up a product development lab, or analytical testing lab, or, or uh, analytical method development lab okay and so these are the options for you to set up your own business overall healthcare you can get into herbal products or nutraceuticals because nutraceuticals are doing extremely well there's no price control you can price the products any way you want and you know uh, you can do good uh, you know business in these areas of course you under nutraceutical you have herbal as well as others and uh, uh, if you don't want to get into manufacturing, you can get into trade. There are so many options. Retail, Jan Aushadi, you know, generic products, you know, selling outlets, wholesale, e-pharmacy, chain of pharmacies, right? And then in retail and Jan Aushadi, you can always, you know, include value-added services like, uh, you know, checking BP, checking blood sugar level, you know, these are things which will help the patients. So Jan Aushadi, little bit of information for you. For pharmacists, you know, 
you get uh, re, uh, you know reimbursement of you know some uh, 1.5 lakh plus uh, 0.5 lakh 2 lakh of rupees from government of india you know if you start your own janashadi shop so you can explore that option also in summary you know what i would like to say is pharma industry is doing very well and there's a very great opportunity for all of you in the pharma industry and uh, there are diverse functions depending on your interest but you should do a proper planning of your career so that you can excel in whichever option you choose and there are a lot of opportunities of funding from the government of india as well as state governments so you should think of starting your own company and there is great time ahead of you and i'm sure at least one of you will think of starting your own business and creating jobs for graduates from kerala the secret of your future is hidden in your daily routine so look at your daily routine and change it if if it, you know if you need to change okay thank you very much i come to end of this session if there are any questions thank you dr uh, premnath shenoy for that uh, excellent session uh, i think you have covered all the aspects of uh, indian pharmaceutical companies as well as the, uh, the career planning as well as opportunities it, i am very sure it was uh, beneficial to all the participants uh, who are uh, listening and attending the session now the session is open for uh, discussion i request the participants please unmute yourself ask your queries as well as doubts or type your queries in the chat box so that i can read read it out for you thank you no questions <laughs> That is good. I think you understood everything what I told you, and you don't have any doubts. No, yeah, Doctor Shana, this I found. No, mostly the students in Kerala they are not uh -huh. asking doubts. After no. the class, they come back yeah. and ask the question. They will not ask the podium or they they are very okay. hesitant. Students, no. please ask. In the in, in the classroom, I can understand, but here you can type. No, you don't <laughs> have to ask the question. You can just type your doubts, whatever you have. So, uh, no, no, no questions. When I speak to students, you know, in many colleges, uh, most of the students, uh, you know, don't prefer to work in the manufacturing setup nowadays. No, okay, they they all prefer to work in office environment. You know, so there's nothing wrong about it. You know, because there are a lot of opportunities in that area also now. Yes, and yes. pharma industry cannot employ all the graduates who are coming out from different colleges in the manufacturing setup because it is not like IT industry. You know, we can't recruit every year people for quality control, for production, and all that. Unless I set up a new unit, we don't need uh, fresh people. You know, so these yes. uh, opportunities in other areas are also plenty, and it's good. But only thing is, they need to prepare well. You know, in advance, if you want to succeed. so you should plan your career much in advance you know not just after your degree and all that you know so you should spend some time on you know so dr bomi there is one question no can you read it yeah okay can... sir there's uh, sir there's a question from uh, uh, rosfina joseph that uh -huh. is career opportunities for regulatory science in india that is the question sir regulatory yeah regulatory uh, yeah see uh, just like pharmacovigilance and of course clinical research there's a, you know it is a it's not a back office kind of thing actual trial happens pharmacovigilance there are a lot of back offices right like that even regulatory affairs also you have opportunities you know in different areas for example you can in a manufacturing setup itself you can join or in a corporate setup you will have opportunities to work as a regulatory professional there are consulting companies where regulatory professions are required and there are certain companies which are working you know uh, which are working as a back office uh, for multinational companies for example astrazeneca has a office in bangalore where they are recruiting regulatory uh, persons for doing work for the global regulatory okay so plenty of opportunities in the regulatory area also
sir i have a, a small doubt yeah. Yeah. probably this uh, this might have uh, yeah, how been by... sir sir one second eh? sir my my doubt is uh, whether yeah. uh, there are any scope for farm days in uh, industry actually what is the scenario right now farm day yeah See, yes sir farm day you 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 know from uh, as a faculty you know you people will know better farm day has opportunities I mean, they are they 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 have to work in hospitals. Okay. Yeah, sir. That that I know, but uh, yeah, yeah. Some... no, no, no. I'm just coming to I'm coming to your point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Okay. So, the first the place is there should be in hospitals, corporate. There are not much opportunities in India. We knew this. This is going to happen. Okay, they are going to come to the industry only. So for them, the best place to go is one is pharmacovigilance. Pharmacovigilance. Clinical research. Because clinical research also happens in a hospital setup. Okay, sir. They can do very well actually. You know, they can grow very fast because they have good knowledge. They have worked in hospitals. You know, internship they do in hospital. So these are the two areas. You know, pharmacovigilance and clinical research. Thank you, sir. Besides the main thing, you know, hospital. You know, where where, where they should uh, be contributing to the as a healthcare professional. You know, healthcare team. Okay, sir. Sir, uh, can I ask one question? That is, yeah, of course. The, we are all worried about the career prospects because uh, if, you, if you are working in a community pharmacy, maybe you start with a pay of around 18,000 to 20,000. Oh. Uh, of course, it is stagnant. But when coming to industry, the initial pay is relatively low, I think. Yeah, uh, probably true. in Yes, you may come. But what's the kind of salary you can expect? Uh, I mean, if you are a good, you know, if you have all the qualities. No, actually, salary is not uh, linked to uh, how good uh, a candidate is or not initially. Okay, your percentage of mark or uh, you know having different uh, certificates and all that, you know, all that will help you only to get an entry. Okay. Salary is uniform for all. Some companies have differential thing for a B farm and M farm. You know, there will be because they have worked two additional years, but many small and mid sized companies, they don't have the difference also because they are going to do the same job when they are taken for a particular position, right? They may not give a higher salary because you have done a PG, but good big companies, for example, AstraZeneca, we had a different salary. For degree holders and PG postgraduates. Okay. So, small companies, uh, I think, the, the, and small companies are in large number, right? So, most of the students have to initially work in smaller companies for a lesser pay, work for two, three years, then, you know, opportunities are plenty once you have experience. So, salaries, we cannot compare the salary what an engineer gets when he goes to IT companies. Because in the, that's what I tell students. Don't look at the initial salary. First, you should start working, gain experience one, two years, then things open up for you. If you're good. If you're not good, then you'll stagnate in the same company or a smaller companies throughout your career. But if you're really good in your work, after two year, two to three years of experience, there are plenty of opportunities in larger companies, you know, where you will do extremely well. Salaries are low. I agree with you. You know, uh, small and mid-sized companies may be offering even 10,000, 15,000, 20,000, you know, depending on companies. It's different in different companies. You know, it's not fixed. Dr. Bobby, there are a few, two more questions. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. So the first question is uh, from Amrita Rajan. That is, can you differentiate the job opportunities in quality assurance and quality control in an industry? That's yeah, question. quality control, you know, quality control, uh, is working in a laboratory wherein you are testing all the inputs, that is raw materials, packaging materials, and the finished products, and the output, that is finished products. Okay, so those graduates and postgraduates who are interested in to work in a laboratory environment, they should take up this job. Okay, normally in quality control, the growth opportunities are not many. Okay, because one lab, there'll be only one manager. 
okay and once in a good company manager he will not leave that company he will be there only weeks mm. okay so opportunity is not plenty qc but if you want a steady job no headaches routine things you know you do the same thing every day you know then one 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 should go for that job okay quality control and most of the companies it is 9 to 5 kind of a thing okay so no, not in very small and mid sized companies i'm sorry yeah there uh, yeah you can't go home till you finish the job okay that's also there in many companies so quality assurance on the other hand as bro, you know lot of other activities there you know one of the areas where you can do uh, extremely well if you are good I, i showed you in one of the slides initially you may join as a in process uh, quality assurance uh, professional later on depending on your interest and the opportunity what you get in the same company or other companies you can specialize in one of the different areas you can become a validation expert you can become a, a qms expert you can become a you know auditor you know like that different opportunities are there okay sir thank you sir one more yeah. question from uh, bharat ns that is uh, which is the best growth area or role after completing m farm in pharmaceutical analysis that is either go to analytical r and d uh, or qz or qa that is the question growth opportunities r and d and qa i would say not so much in qc r and d and qa growth opportunity but you should yeah you should choose it based on your interest if you are research you know your your research based kind of a thing you know you are thinking you know and you are good at that then you should go into r and d if you want you know uh, uh, if you are you know inter not interested in research but in quality assurance then you should prefer that you know but opportunities are good in these two areas uh, research as well as uh, quality assurance but you will not find r and d in small and you know many small companies okay only if you get opportunities in a bigger companies there you may get opportunity in r and d uh, so then your preference you know uh, your option remains only qa you know because uh, not all companies will have analytical r and d only maybe top out of 9000 companies i said maybe some 250 companies may have analytical r and d not all of them okay thank you thank you sir i think there are no more questions sir in that case we will wind up the first session yes sir yeah okay, so before that you. on behalf of ipa kerala state branch industrial forum i express my sincere and uh, heartfelt gratitude to dr premnath shrenoy for sharing your valuable time and uh, enlighten us with your refreshing session sir thank you very much and to the participants as sir told plan your career before you graduate plan your career before you graduate so thank you very much uh, we are winding the first session here and uh, back to abinami thank you okay thank you thank you thank you dr shrenoy thank you dr premnath sir for your valuable and informative words it has definitely been motivating for us the budding pharmacists thank you david sir for chairing the session and thank you bobby sir for moderating the session now let us move on to the next interesting session we have an eminent pharma professional mr vinupal kk director of solista pharmaceuticals private limited as the speaker of this session regarding career opportunities in quality assurance regulatory affairs and marketing and sales the session will be chaired by mr p k hari kumar convener ipa kerala state branch industry forum and also former works manager kerala states drug and pharmaceuticals limited alapura let me introduce the moderator for this session dr anjana john principal jdt islam college of pharmacy for the past 22 years and an alumnus of college of pharmaceutical sciences medical college tiruvananthapuram ma'am has completed her post graduation from jss college of pharmacy mysore in pharmaceutics and was awarded phd from kannur university ma'am has guided several post graduate projects also 
Her research interest is enhancement of pharmaceutical care of hospitalized patients. She has good number of publications in national and international peer-reviewed journals. With immense pleasure, I invite Anjana Ma'am for moderating this session. Over to you, Ma'am. Thank you, dear Abhirami, for your sweet introduction. It gives me immense pleasure to be part of today's session. And I express my profound gratitude for being able to chair to moderate this session. We have with us Mr. P.K. Harikumar, sir, who is a distinguished person, a distinguished pharmaceutical person in the pharmaceutical industry to chair this session. We are happy to have you with us, sir. He is Mr. P.K. Harikumar, sir, is convener of industry forum of IPA, K, IPA Kerala State Branch and he is the former works manager of Kerala State Drugs and Pharmaceuticals Limited Alapura. He graduated from College of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Government Medical College, Trivandrum, and is an, has taken as MBA from MG University. He has done a lot of skill development professional programs like Diploma in Production Management, Diploma in Materials Management, Diploma in Labor Law. He has expertise in product development of various types of formulations and their stability studies. He has conducted scientific evaluation of traditional use of medicinal plants. He was a technical consultant of Kerala State Cooperative Homeo Pharmaceuticals Limited, Alapura, and Saheli Manufacturing for Hindustan Latex. He is a life member of IPA and KPGA and a very active professional with a lot of social commitment. And he is an example of lifelong learning. If you can if you see his biodata, we can understand that. He is a person who practices lifelong learning. And I invite you, sir, to chair this session. A warm good evening to one and all. Thank you, Dr. Anjana, for the nice introduction. Dear IPA State President, Dr. Jay Shehar, Secretary, Dr. John Joseph, Industrial Forum Chairman, Dr. David Joseph, Executive Members of Industry Forum and IPA, and today's distinguished speakers, Dr. Premnath Shenoy, Sri Vinubal KK, uh, moderators, Dr. Bobby, Dr. Anjana, Sri Sandosh, professionals and dear participants. As a part of attracting the budding professionals to the evergreen pharma industry, the Industrial Forum of IPA chalked out this program. Its career opportunities of pharma industry in manufacturing, quality control, quality assurance, regulatory affairs, marketing and sales. We have selected participants who are really interested in industry and to prepare to work outside Kerala also. The first session is just completed by an energetic, experienced speaker, Dr. Premnath Chennai, regarding the opportunities in the manufacturing and QC mainly, which I hope is fully benefited to the participants. The second of this kind is before you, which will give you all about the job opportunities in quality assurance, regulatory affairs, marketing and sales. By Sri Vinubal KK, Director of Solista Pharmaceuticals Private Limited, Pulisheri. Quality assurance and regulatory affairs are closely interrelated. Recently, I have seen that 36,764 job opportunities are available. In, in a job portal of nowcree.com for QA in the field of QA and RA. QA helps the organization to create and ship product and ship products that are clear of defects and meets the need and expectations of customers. That is high quality, 
product resulted in satisfied customers, resulted in customer loyalty, that is brand loyalty, repeat purchases, etc. This all also improves the efficiency in production, cost, better work and environment, customer trust, and business growth. <coughs> Regarding regulatory affairs, this includes obtaining approval of new pharma products, ensuring the approval is maintained as long as the company wants them in markets, understanding both legal and scientific matters, skills in IT, negotiation, analytical team management, problem solving, presentation, interpersonal relations, etc. are a requisite for this. And for this, we have to get some experience before entering into regulatory affairs. In marketing and sales, research and development, marketing opportunities, planning, implementing new sales plans, etc. With a much personal and privilege, with much proud and privilege, I am introducing Sri Vinupal KK to give an overview of career opportunities in the QA, RA, marketing and sales in pharma industry. He is a pharmacy graduate from College of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Thiruvananthapuram, and started his career in pharma industry from 1988. He earned an industrial diploma in teaching and training from the University of Cambridge, UK in 2005. He is an excellent example of a pharmacy graduate. He is an entrepreneur with commitments, professionalism and leadership. Quality that rose to the level of director of, pharmaceutical, of a pharmaceutical firm. That is it. The success is he is willing to go outside Kerala. He got initial manufacturing experience from Citadel Fine Pharmaceuticals Private Limited, Chennai. His career interest in QA and RA started from Shasan Pharmaceuticals Limited, Chennai. Strides Pharmaceuticals, Bangalore. Microlab, Hosur, Force India, Chennai. His career graph rose to the level of director, Sun Glow Life Sciences Private Limited, a contract manufacturer of pharmaceuticals and nutraceuticals to leading Indian companies and exports and for and for Australian market. As a GMB consultant, he has wide experience and as a quality audit and especially as a QA head for green site construction projects for European and US markets. Managing the regulatory audits from US, European, MHRA, Health Canada, etc. He got extensive training from Lilly Lilly Lender. In 1970, he became the director of Solista Pharmaceuticals Limited, a contract manufacturing company, manufacturing nutraceuticals to Indian companies and export to US, Europe. His area of expertise are in QA, QMS, FSMS, CEDAX compliance requirements. Drug regulation requirements of India, US, Canada, Australia, Brazil, WHO, etc. Facility commissioning, qualification, validation, vendor auditing for API formulations and packaging materials. He is also a certified lead auditor of ISO 9001 and ISO 14001. To conclude, I can say without hesitation that we are fortunate to have him here to exchange his views and advices from his experience and expertise to the participants a warm welcome to Sri Vinubal KK for the presentation please hello yeah yeah so, uh, good 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 evening to all and thanks uh, Mr. Harikoma for your nice introduction and specifically special thanks to Mr. Jay Shagar who is my teacher also and his energetic call and uh, follow up made me to accept this. I thought, OK, spending time is sure I should not deny that. Thanks a lot, sir, and thanks a lot for the IPA Kerala State Branch for organizing this session for the students. As uh, Dr. Shana rightly said, this should have been for the, the, the students who are completing third year or fourth year so that he has also opened up a, a new Term that career planning specifically for the pharma students because during our terms and all such words were not heard because 
there were nobody to talk about that. Whoever passed out just escaped from the scenario of Kerala and go to different parts of the world and sustain. Now it is not the case because as Dr. Sharna rightly said, computation is too much. When 1987 we passed out, it was just 16 students from Kerala, whereas in this now it is more than I think 2500 students passing out per year. That itself shows how much is the competition. Anyway, I am going directly into the, the presentation. I will just share my slides. One moment. Yes. Is it seen? It's coming up. Yeah, it's coming up. You can make a slideshow. Yeah, one moment, sir. Is it okay? okay. Nice. Okay, welcome to all. Okay, it's it's a very brief uh, session. Uh, Dr. Sharna is uh, given a broad picture and uh, of the global as well as the Indian scenario and the many opportunities available for the students. I, I am covering a similar one, but in a different manner. First thing is because if you really want to work in an industry, you have to undergo a metamorphosis. Otherwise, it is difficult because that is the current scenario. Eight-hour job is gone. Maybe for a few multinational companies that may be there, but many other Indian companies, if you start at nine o'clock, it may not be possible to come out by 5.30. It extends because that is the pressure and that is the commitment you have to give and that is the deliverables required. And moreover, that pharma industry is not like FMCG. It is all cost controlled. So there will be a lot of cost control mechanism were by limited staff, maximum output will be expected. In such scenario, you should be able to work, you should be able to deliver, you should be able to show your capabilities. No other choice. So finally, no gain without pain. So let me start from that. First thing is, as uh, Dr. Shana has said, you have to decide where you have to be settled. For that, there will be so many people for you to get advice. But out of all that, you should identify your strengths and your weaknesses. From that, you have to decide where you have to settle, whether you have to be in industry or in academic or clinical pharmacy or just as a pharmacist. Before deciding that, at least you should have some mentor so that you get your weaknesses export or your strength focused, then deciding, yes, this is my area, let me work on that. But once you decide it, focus on that. Otherwise, because you know very well, rolling stone never picks up things. So don't become a rolling stone. Instead, you concentrate on area which you want to work, then focus on that and achieve more things on that. Otherwise, it will be difficult to show your performance in industry. Because many of uh, candidates have certain constraints, you know, because the language, then your hometown, then family circumstances, financial positions, all those things. When you go out with the limited salary you get, you have to do all the things. When I started my career, in 1988, my salary was just 900 rupees. Now that is not the case. It is 10 times or 15 times more, but at the same time expense also is high. But still you have to manage your expense and you should be ready to go out because Kerala is not a, what you can say, a great field for pharma manufacturing, but maybe for consumption. Considering that, yes, whoever want to be there, yes, you can work. But there are people who want to achieve more means. Unfortunately, Kerala is not the right place. 
you have to go out. Then for that purpose, you may have to convince your family members, mother or parents, whatever. But once you convince you should be ready for that, then you should not repent. At the same time, there are many people who are born with silver phones. They may not be having that much pressure to have a job. Then they can choose whatever they want. Maybe just a degree in pharma and doing some other job. Maybe they will be having some business in hand, then they can manage it. Now let us go industry because already Dr. Shana has mentioned all these things. I am not uh, going in detail of that, but only the, the certain points what we, I want to highlight is because in manufacturing sector, we have got finished pharmaceuticals, active, then nutritional supplements, herbal ingredients, cosmetics, medical devices, then testing and third party. This is the broad picture. Okay. In finished pharmaceutical cell, why I have given the regulation here is because being a pharmacist, we have to comply with the regulations. That means we should know what is what. That is the reason I mentioned those regulations here. So that before going into the industry, you should make sure yeah, that you know these regulations to some extent. So that interpretation of the regulations at the industry level will be easy because there nobody will be to give you each and every pieces of information as your teacher telling during the class, because sometimes you may be making mistakes and learning it, but you have to learn by, you have to read by yourself, learn by yourself, discuss, understand all those things. So for that, you have to spend a lot of time. So all these regulations, whatever you learn during your college may not be enough because practically you will be experiencing during your industrial life. Then uh, in the testing field, yes, we have got commercial testing labs, third party or then third party auditors. All these things comes not immediately for the freshers. You should have some experience either in manufacturing or in testing or in clinical whatever. Without that, you cannot be an auditor because for that you require certain experience. In commercial testing life, whoever having the okay, the the affinity towards testing analysis, the best part is commercial testing labs. But you, their salary will not be that much. But the number of samples you are getting, the number of problems you are going to experience would be so high, where you can really brush up all your technical knowledge, and you can be a real expert in testing. So rather starting in a in a pharmaceutical company, if you get a job in commercial testing labs, even at the law Australia, I would recommend whoever wishes to do that, that will be the right forum. Now let us go into a, into a real scenario, how we classify the candidates, specifically the freshers, how we come. For, for example, quality assurance, formulation development, R&D and all. In college assurance, yes, we have got a QMS system, IPQA, technology transfer, R&D, QA and all. So when we go into the, the, the candidate analysis, we look into their oral and written skills in English, whether he's a team player, whether he is going into the details, then analytical skills, investigation skills, computer, communication, review, all discipline, because specifically in QA, R&D, discipline is a must. Otherwise, you will not achieve the things what you want. For example, in QA, your mark sheet, not a big concern. Even if you scored a low marks, doesn't matter. But if you have got a managerial skills high, then you are there. Whereas in formulation development, that is not the case. Your mark sheet matters. You should know the subject very well. Otherwise, you cannot be an expert in a, as a development pharmacist. And it, Sorry. In development patients, of course, because so many trials you may be taking, but it may not be going into success. One out of maybe 100 or 1000 may going into real success and determination is a must. So to come as a, the expert in formulation development is not a one day job or one or two years job. Many years you have to really work and you should be a perpetual learner. Read, read, read. And unless you are having an out of box thinking, 
you cannot go into a companies like maybe AstraZeneca or any other multinational companies because just like uh, the person who is having an embalm and uh, knowing the subject, that alone is not enough. There is some other things required to come into the multinational level of development and uh, research. Because in formulation development, learning is from every failures. Yes, you are you should ready to face the failures, but at the same time, you should learn from that and you should carry on. When you drive a vehicle, you may be making silly accident, but you should not just stop your driving. The next moment, you should take the courage again, drive, face the problems. That's all. In formulation development, record keeping skills is very, very important. Whatever you do, it has to be recorded in a systematic manner so that once finally, when you achieve a formula, all your earlier work will be required to make a final report so that your the commercial production will have all the information what is required for that your detailing is very must so that 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 only takes you there so whoever is looking into a casual manner better not to venture into the development r and d api is the another big area where if you really having good knowledge in chemistry, then that is the best area. And skills in synthetic and uh, natural chemistry, that will be good. Then specifically, whoever looking into the development part, this should be complaints to safety. Then again, sorry. Persians learning all those things required if you want to be a successful R&D chemist. Another big area for the pharmacist is purchase, because I have seen very, very few people who are really coming into purchase. Because uh, now purchase is not just a purchase, because it is, it is almost like a techno-commercial activity where the GMP requirement has gone far, far above. You should have the knowledge of the material and you should know the, have the knowledge of the product, where it is going. Then the, the, the compliance requirement for the materials OK, what are all the test to test to undergo? Because you'll be getting a number of suppliers, a number of manufacturers, because all the materials you may not be getting from the manufacturers. You may have to depend on dealers. When you depend on dealers, they'll be dealing a number of manufacturers from India and abroad. Abroad means, again, from China. And a lot of materials are coming from China where the quality is a question mark. I think many of you would have heard US is really working on reducing their dependency on China. That means increasing the dependency on India. And that is the one of the biggest market it is open for India. And it's, it is happening. And we are also experiencing that. In purchase, yes, who, whoever is having good negotiation skills, yes, you can really go into purchase. Your technical commercial interactions, ability to make contacts, all these things matters there then follow up, follow up, follow up. That is very, very, very important in purchase because if you want to buy a material at a good price, you have to incur many vendors, then follow up, what is the rate, all those things. Whoever is good in that, that's the right field for you and you can really excel in that. And monitoring market fluctuations, updating vendors price, there will be competitors and getting the information from the vendors, other competitors, what rate they are buying, all these things matters. If you have got those skills, just jump into purchase. That is the right field for you. Warehouse, that is another area where pharmacists can really excel because if you really know the, the material nature and other things, sure, warehouse, it will be fully under your control. Many of the times warehouse is man feels it is for commerce graduates. It is not at all that is the case. Commerce, rather commerce graduates, pharmacy graduates, I've got a lot of things to do there. Once you enter into industry, you will really understand what is what. Because knowledge of materials, different vendors is packaging. Because the material coming from different vendors got different packaging. Sometimes there will be pilfering happening, replacing the material en route, all those things. Because 
I personally had experienced certain cases very long back where one of the products, one of the material that is API, we sold to one of the multinational company was thieved and root. About 15, 16 containers were replaced with starch instead of API. And that material went to the company and they put it into production and finally the material failed. Then I involved in the investigation. We deputed one uh, detective agency and they found out during the transit, the driver has stopped in a common uh, eating place. On the highway there. There are people who remove the door, take the material out, replace it with the stuff, then leave the vehicle. That is the way it had happened. Finally, we identified who is the culprit in that, and that was the driver involved in the vehicle. When the detective agency and policemen went to the driver's place, they came to know that driver has been murdered. This happened in about uh, 20 years back. So such a type of things still happening. So unless you have got a real strength in knowing the material nature, all these things will happen. And GMP requirements, properties of materials, all these things you should know if you want to be a real warehouse manager. Similarly, another thing is vendor audit. Vendor audit and all, once you have good experience in warehouse or production or QA, that will be one of the biggest area where you can really explore. And that is one of the best place where you can travel across the world by spending no money from your pocket. That is the vendor audit, but you should know how to audit, how to speak, how to investigate, how to find out issues, how to recommend certain corrective action that need really experience. But unless otherwise you have the patience to reach to that level, you cannot, but it requires. Without knowing all these things, many of the people feels that starting you are getting a good salary in Gulf. Everybody jumps there, but finally you end up within four walls and so many medicines. But the real enjoyment of industrial life, many of the people are losing. I don't say that, OK, pharmacist is not a good job, but still many of the people just because of the money they want, they go there, but losing many of the things in industry still. If you people can look into that, that will be really good. Another area is training for technical quality system, food safety management all. If you have got really a good uh, experience in subjects, then you can take up the training aspect because many of the companies now look into the trainers where they can utilize their experience for training the freshers. Another thing, in marketing, it is a mainly a techno commercial activity where you should know about the company at the same time about the product, then selling the company and the product in terms of sales for the, the customers, presenting yourself, that is how you dress and all those things really matters. Then ability to make contacts, frequent follow up, then language that is very very important local language as well as hindi english all these things really matters if you really want to work in marketing and in medical sales representative means yes sure communication skills the knowledge of the products that is really required then selling skills that is really a must then perseverance because you have to travel a lot then meeting the doctors and waiting outside, sun, all those. It is really a tough job. Unless otherwise you have that perseverance, you cannot really be an excellent salesperson. And another thing is ethics. That is really, really important if you are working as a sales representative. Because nowadays, rather selling your product, many of the people tell wrong thing about the competitor's product and make an advantage. Don't go into that level. That is really unethical. And another one is presenting the, the the presenting yourself. Okay, subject knowledge, training skills, all all this coming into the product managers. Because if you want to become a product manager, you should know about the product. You should know how to train your medical representatives. Then how to prepare the product literature for doctors. All those things matters. 
So whoever having those skills, soft skills, as Dr. Shanai rightly said, soft skills, that really matters when you are working as a, as a product manager. Then another area is regulatory affairs, regulatory complaints, and analytical assurance. Because somebody was asking a question, MFARM uh, analysis, where it is, where it is coming as analytical assurance. That is, if you got few years experience as a quality control person, then you know what is what in testing, then how the in instrumental analysis is happening and all those things. Then you can work as an analytical assurance person as part of a QA. We're reviewing the completed documents and making sure that it is meeting all the procedure requirement as well as the regulatory complaints so that your company is ready at any point of time to meet any regulatory audit. So whoever exporting to US, Europe or Australia and any other regulated markets, it is always ready for audit at any time. Their analytical assurance matters a lot. Because data integrity is the one issue which across the world everybody is feared. Analytical assurance person's main job is to ensure that there is no data integrity issues. So your knowledge on that is really, really matters. Regulatory complaints is the one where you should know about the regulations and make sure that your company is meeting those regulations and your procedures are in compliance with that, all those things. For that, yes, you need experience. Knowledge of regulations, then how it is interpreted, how it has to be transferred to your procedures, that really matters. For that, you require some experience, how it has to be interpreted, how it has to be split and brought into your systems. For that, knowledge in QMS or food safety management system is very important. Then practices. Because regulations never say how you have to practice. What they say, that is the expectation they say. We Regulation says these are all the things required. But that requirement, how you have to transcribe into the practical things, yes. From your experience, you have to split into those practical procedures, and then convert into the operations. Another thing is auditing skills. Against the regulations, you have to audit your different departments and make sure that complaints always there. In regulatory affairs, yes, of one thing is application, license applications, so that whether drug license or FSSA license or your uh, application, AND applications or DMF applications, all these things filing to the regulatory authorities as per the requirements. Then, if when you file, yes, regulation says certain requirements. Whether the document you compiled is meeting that requirement, yes, you require interpretation. How it is, how they will be reviewing these documents. For that, yes, you should have seen some audits or you should have worked with certain auditors so that you will know how they are looking into these documents and how you have to prepare your documents. For that, it is not one day job or one year job. Really, you have to struggle, you have to learn. Site product registry, DM, all those things, response to queries. Because once you submit your documents, there will be a lot of questions from the regulators. Then you should have the skills to reply. How your reply is going, that really, really important. It is not just like writing a letter, but reviewing the questions, comparing against the regulations, seeing the documents you submitted, then clubbing all those things and make a justifiable response that is really important for that yes you should know the regulations you should know the internal procedures and your command on english all these things counts another big area is uh, consulting and certification agents working as a third party auditor for that you require experience at least 10 years plus then a lot of area where you can look into as a QMS auditor or EMS auditor, food safety management or hazard analysis and critical control, HACCP specifically for the nutritional supplements and all it comes. Another area is BRCGS, global standard for European market. That also is a food safety management system, one of the top uh, <clears throat> requirements. Another thing is 17025, that is NABL certification, that is 
for the analytical laboratories. That requirement also is very important. And there are so many other standards what is coming into. And for that, yes, you should work in an industry to know the applications and the regulations, interpretation and all those things. For that, you should read. Then in there, update yourself. Then get trained as an auditor. For example, American Society of American uh, Society for Quality has got a program for audit, auditor, lead auditor. It is really a costly training. There is a, uh, what you can say, syllabi for that. And you can get trained. There is an online uh, exams and all. Yes, that is a good thing if you really work, want to work as an auditor. Then you can work independently. Another thing is that lead auditor training like QMS or whatever. Then uh, once you have got an auditor uh, certification, there is a body called uh, IRCA, where it's an international uh, registry where you can register with them. And whenever you go for an audit, you have to submit a summary to IRCA so that you are always an IRCA registered auditor so that any company across the world can utilize your auditing experience. Because I worked for an American company for about one and a half years and I was traveling across Asian countries as an auditor. Any company you can audit because you know only the man quality management system. You, you need not know the real the, the work done by the company. As long as you are aware of the systems, you can audit any companies. You know how to audit. That's all. It is really an interesting field, but you have to travel a lot. That's why travel across the world at the expense of others. If you are really a person love to travel, just take this job. You will love it. Another thing, industrial behavior, games people play, because there are a lot of people in industry. When you go, your seniors are there. If somebody knows you are very smart, then starts your problems. There will be because promotions, all those things. So <clears throat> play, play your cards safely, smartly. No loose stocks. Somebody will take an advantage, twisting the things, telling your boss, getting you scolding, all those gone. So be careful your initial industry life. Specifically when you go out of Kerala, it is very, very, very important. Similarly, you cannot be too nice to all. You have to be firm. And you cannot soap your boss too much because there are others watching it. Be careful on that. Similarly, in industry, arrogancy doesn't have any seat. But you will see so many people arrogant. Yes, that is the way industry goes. No other choice. Show your leadership quality. That is very, very important because your boss, your management will be looking into that. Don't lose your identity anywhere. There will be many promote your negatives because when you are a leader, your seniors may not be that much capable, then he will be promoting your negative things. So be ready to face all those things. Don't jump to show your potential. Be patient slowly. Slow and steady wins the race in this. Similarly, jealousy has no medicine. Nothing can be done. So you have to be careful about yourself. Similarly, any, anything going wrong, you should find an opportunity in every calamity. This is not my words, but you would have heard. You can win a book. He has told this. I don't remember his name. Uh, in industry, you will be under tremendous stress, specifically when an audit comes, when regulatory audits or customer audit comes. But when you come out of the gate, leave your stress within the gate itself. Don't take it to your home or hostel. Be cool. Then you are there. Otherwise, your life will be miserable. OK, you should know how to tune yourself to the changing situations. You should know how to keep your identity always. Don't lose it. And there is a trademark of you. Keep it. This is the thing what I want to show because this is the last about a couple of weeks back. It has come in Hindu. Walmart India I said to me it should because a lot of things were Walmart sourcing from China. Now they are turning towards India. 
and there are a lot of goods going from India. Similarly, Target, there is another uh, big chain shop. They are looking OTC products from India. So a lot of companies from US is coming where opportunities are high. So whichever the companies meeting the US and European requirements have got a lot of potential, even to Canada also, because of trade issues with China, India has got a lot of opportunities where you can also be part of those growth. You see this uh, uh, poster. This is came in year 2000. Vishwanathan Anand. When he became the first. Grandmaster, sorry, the world champion in chess. It's a bird. It's a plane. No, it's attitude. Yes, that matters. This is really important. Finally, when you want to go to an industry, you have to sell yourself with a good CV. So consult a senior or your uh, career uh, agent in the college so that an impressive CV is prepared. Then post it to the companies which you like. Then let us see. There is one more uh, as presentation, a quick one. I will, I will show you so that uh, that is a one moment. So is it seen? Hello. Yes, we can see. Yeah, I am just quick. Uh, this this is a uh, this is a small story which. All have to go a little faster. Harry and Tortoise. Sir, is the speed is okay? Yeah, okay. So this is what we heard. Slow and steady wins the race. Now let us see. Fast and consistent will always be the slow and steady. This is very important. Identifying your core competency, then change the playing field to suit your core competency. So career planning come into picture.
So the teamwork is the important. Competing against the situation is important. Be strategic. Thank you. Doctor, Doctor Anjana, please. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Vinipal, sir, for your insights into the career opportunities in the pharmaceutical industry and giving us a hand holding session for a hand holding session for the participants into what the industry actually wants from them. It was really, in, it was a really insightful session with your mantras, with your advices. It was actually a very, it was sort of an eye-opening session, and I'm sure that the students will have the participants, the students would have found real takeaways from this session. Now, the session is open for question and answer Q A session. If you have any queries. You can ask the questions directly or you can put the questions in the chat box. The field is open to you, the participants. Please make use of this opportunity. They can unmute and ask questions or they can uh, type on the chat box. Don't, yes, don't be hesitant. <laughs> please don't hesitate. This was yes. a wonderful session. Like it was, you know, it was typically like I was walking through, I was seeing the whole thing. What is happening in the industry? The strengths, the weaknesses, how to get over the weaknesses, delve into your strengths. What each and every career in the industry wants the applicant to fulfill what are the skills what are the knowledge please any questions you can unmute and ask also directly you may not get a better opportunity participants Maybe I don't know. Up, up to the end of the session, 50% of the participant decides back to academy. Then <laughs> that will also be good for the academics. Good. So maybe they are pondering over whatever you have told them. And uh, maybe they are delving into their See, strengths. Only one thing is. No gain without pain. That is always there. So, yes, sir. Okay. That is a takeaway mantra from your session. This session, sir. Because if Harimasa I am. Here, sir, okay. Harimasa. 
depending on my company. That is the great satisfaction I have. Yes, yes. And now, okay, now we are expanding to another area because started with nutraceutical. Now we are going into drugs and pharmaceuticals soon, and we are going in the expansion mode. And fortunately, we our company have got a 25% stake from a German company, and they have invested in our company. That itself is a big uh, achievement for us. And that and all. Uh, it cannot happen overnight and the struggle what we underwent and still it is going it is tremendous because becoming an entrepreneur is just like a millions of dollar in hand and starting a company no which everybody know i think uh, our uh, uh, our ipa we have got people who knows what is what that is the pain but now sitting at this side uh, really it gives satisfaction but I am playing it in not in my, uh, but I can say the birthplace, but in a different state. Yes, you know the language, you should know the language, you should know the culture, all those things. It is a pain, but there are a lot of gain. Okay, then uh, Dr. Angela, we can conclude by thanking. Thank you, Vinipal, sir, for your uh, wonderful session. And I'm sure that. There will be definitely some candidates who are participating today ready to take on pain for some gain. Thank you, sir. And I thank uh, Arikumar, sir, for chairing this session. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, Vinipal, sir, for giving us an informative insight into the wide range of career opportunities awaiting us. I also thank Hari Kumar sir for chairing the session wonderfully and Anjana ma'am for moderating the session. At this juncture, I request Mr. Santosh, Protection Manager, Kerala State Drugs and Pharmaceuticals Limited, Alapura, to propose a vote of thanks. Sir has been a versatile industry expert from Kerala, having more than 25 years of rich experience in pharma manufacturing and formulation development. He is also well versed in project design and development and commissioning of manufacturing facilities, including parental products. His competency in regulatory affairs, GMP certification and involvement in product development have excelled the Kerala State Drugs and Pharmaceutical Limited to further heights product diversity and profitability. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Abhirami. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today we had uh, two excellent sessions related to the career opportunities in uh, pharmaceutical industry. Actually, this program is organized by IPA Industry Forum Kerala. So our aim is to have a better understanding regarding the various uh, job opportunities in pharma industry. And also we are planning for some other uh, training program for the industry students uh, that will give more inputs and uh, base to build up. So today our uh, invited speakers done an excellent job in explaining in detail the various uh, job opportunities in pharmaceutical industry. So I come to my duty. So first of all, I like to thank Dr. Premnal Shenai, former director, QA, regulatory of AstraZeneca Pharma India Limited, Bangalore. His words will definitely help to understand more about the career opportunities in pharma industry and also the guidelines for achieving that. On behalf of Industry Forum Kerala, 
We thank you, sir. Then I like to thank Mr. Vinbal K K, Director, Solicitor, Pharmaceuticals, Private Limited, Puducherry, for his excellent and uh, motivating speech regarding the career opportunities and the metamorphosis you have to make for success. Thank you, sir. Then I like to thank Dr. Jagashagar, sir. President of IPA Forum Kerala. He is actually the master brain behind this program. And also, I like to thank Hari Kumar, sir. John Joseph, sir. David Joseph, sir. Dr. Bobby Johnson, sir. Professor and HOD. James, St. Joseph College of Pharmacy, Chertala. I like to thank Dr. Anjana John, Principal, JDT Islam College of Pharmacy, Kodi Code. <coughs> And also, I thank Mr. Afirami. I like to thank the principals and faculties from various pharmacy colleges. And also, I like to thank uh, the participants. Once again, I thank one and all, and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Let us hope that today's session have created a greater impact on each and every one of us. I wholeheartedly thank the entire team of IPA Kerala State Branch. I also express my gratitude to the principal and the entire team of Amrita School of Pharmacy for providing this platform and facilities to conduct the event. Thank you all once again. I request everyone to kindly rise for the national anthem. once again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Vinipal. Okay, thank good night, sir. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you, sir. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Gracias. 